Hey everyone, it's AYBL Main here. Uh, this is my series, uh, AYBL Main's top five series for albums, songs, uh, movies, and the like. Uh, I'll be counting down those things, or at least uh, ranking those things as I go along. Please uh, take time to hit the red subscribe button down below. Please leave comments, maybe your top five in each particular category. That would be kind of cool. And whether you like or dislike the video. Um, other than that, guys, let's just sit back and enjoy and, uh, and plug away at this series. I appreciate it. Hello again, everyone. AYBL Main here. Uh, we're sitting here uh, going through the top five albums for every year I've been alive. I'm finally at year 2020, even though that it was kind of like a down year for artists overall because there wasn't a lot of material being released because of COVID. Still, there were some great quality albums that did come out of this year. And uh, I definitely love these five albums that made it uh, made the cut for this year. So this is a just jump right in. I've got uh, my top five. I've got Marcus King, No Remorse. It's kind of a southern rock, blues rock kind of feel. Uh, he has, uh, it was produced by uh, Dan Auerbach, you know, the guy from the Black Keys. He seems to crop up a lot whenever we're doing uh, guys that are doing blues rock or lo-fi sound. So he's got a song on there called The Well and Too Much Whiskey. And uh, One Day She's Here is probably my favorite track on there. Very interesting stuff. It was nominated for Best Americana Album for the Grammys. Get some, you can definitely tell some influences from uh, psychedelic rock here a little bit. Maybe even a little touch of that Bakersfield country, which I like and prefer over Nashville country. So, Also making it into my top five is going to be Phoebe Bridger's Punisher. Uh, this is a very highly acclaimed album. Um, Tony Berg and herself, she did the producing on the album. Uh, kind of an emo, folk, indie rock kind of feel to it. Uh, Kyoto, Garden Song. Um, I Know the End, um, Chinese Satellite is probably my favorite track on there. It's got three Grammy nominations. Uh, some of you guys may know her from her appearance on Saturday Night Live, which uh, you know, sparked some controversy when she uh, went off on stage and uh, decimated her guitar, which is something that's been done a thousand times. I don't know why it was such a big deal with this young lady. So love the album. It's a great album. Also in my top five, I've got Run the Jewels 4, RTJ4. Uh, Straight up hip hop, guys. Hardcore hip hop is good stuff. Produced by LP and uh, Josh Holm, the guy from Queens of the Stone Age. He's one of the producers on the album. It's some great stuff, and 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 a little, just a little bit of sampling. A lot of the stuff is created right in studio, uh, produced right from the the dat cards themselves, and uh, and stock and stock uh, sounds and stuff. And it's just, it's really great. Uh, probably my favorite song on there is probably the ground below, which samples uh, the song Ether by Gang of Four. Fantastic. Also, uh, one of the songs on there is uh, Ooh La La, which is uh, recently featured uh, during the uh, movie uh, Vacation Friends, which is on um, Hulu. Uh, if you haven't seen that yet, check it out. It's kind of funny. Um, so uh, this is a this is a great album. It's one of my favorite hip hop albums of the 2020s so far. And I know it's only been a couple years, but definitely one worth checking out. Uh, making it into my top five, it's going to have to be The Weekends After Hours. I mean, this, uh, this album was critically and commercially acclaimed. Right at the top, it's produced by Weekend and Ilangelo. Uh, synth pop, R&B, kind of got this 80s vibe to it. Um, some parts remind you kind of like of, of MJ back in the day. That's what the kind of sound is. Uh, Heartless is a good track. Blinding Lights was this, this massive track. In Your Eyes, the title track was very big. He got no Grammy nominations for this album, which is just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous that that happened. I don't know what was going on there. He also had this uh, Super Bowl appearance that all, uh, drew all this big controversy. People just couldn't understand what he was doing. And um, I think a lot of people just uh, are out of touch with modern music, so they just don't understand what's going on. Um, so, and, and everybody wants like, you know, the same old five rock bands to do the Super Bowl halftime show anymore. So never going to happen, guys. Those guys are gone. So, but number one for me, I've got is, is I got Brian Fallon's Local Honey album as the number one album for 2020. If you hadn't got a chance to uh, listen to it, fantastic album. I like Brian Fallon. I love the stuff that he's done with Gaslight Anthem and the Horrible Crows. If you haven't listened to any of those bands, you need to go check those guys out for sure. It's a superb album. Uh, 21 Days is a great track. You've Stolen My Heart Away. 
I Don't Mind is a great track as well. Horses is a great track. Uh, I actually had tickets to go see this guy down in Portland in a very intimate setting, and COVID kicked off, and, and everything just kept getting rescheduled and postponed, and finally everybody just said, just give us our money back, and we'll call it a day. Um, if, if I had a rank of the top 10 albums uh, for uh, the 2010s, this one's going to be in the in, in the top five for sure overall for the whole decade. That's how good this album is. So I recommend that you check it out. That's what I've got for 2020s, guys. Um, I'm hoping to wrap this up by the end of the week for all of this entire series and be able to concentrate on some other things that I want to do for the channel. So you guys have a good day.